Hello and welcome to the update for June here at Reesby Estates and on the farm. So June in total weather wise 39.8 millimetres of rain which is around average. We are happy with the rainfall we've had which is the first time I've said that in about the last nine stroke ten months. We've had a maximum temperature of 28.3, which was on the 24th of June. And we had a low of 3.6 degrees back at the beginning around the 5th of June. So quite extremes in temperatures. It's been a bit of a dull month. We did eventually get some sun sort of two thirds of the way through, which, um, which has helped our crops. There was they was lacking in sunlight to actually build the energy to get the yields out of them. So all in all, June weather-wise has been pretty much of an average month. So we are happy with that. Now I was hoping to bring you an update on the new combine arriving for the June um, issue, but it hasn't quite arrived. This is due in the next few days, the first few days of July. So July will be a busy one. We will have the arrival of the new combine and then we will probably have the start of harvest. So what I thought I'd do for this video is just show you the actual crops we're growing. Now they're getting towards harvest. You can see the seeds on them, the grains which we're gonna harvest. So let's go and take a look at what we've got. So I'll do them in the order of what I think we'll be taking them to harvest. So the first one I'm in here is our oilseed rape. It's a fairly tall crop, as you can see. It's almost as, as tall as what I am. Here's the rape. These are the pods. This would have been yellow flowers during the March and April period. Um, grows on these big stems, but these are what we are harvesting. Now, as we look at these, the idea will be the seeds inside of here. You can see these black seeds. That means it's getting about towards harvest. These pods will go a lot more brittle, but the seeds are black. We need this to be all, even all the greenery to come out of it before we get to harvest. So we are about, as we stand now, a couple of weeks off, actually getting them to harvest on here. So that's oil seed rape, as the name suggests, oil seed. This is grown for the oil content, it is pressed. Um, and then the oil is used for a variety of of different things. Yeah, so our next crop, which we will probably have at harvest, is our winter barley, which we have here. And again, we're, we're probably a couple of weeks off harvest. So the rape and the barley are coming very, very similar timings to one another. So here is what we're actually harvesting with the barley. These grains, combined will rub. And we will end up with, with the grains here down to the barley. Now this is a feed barley, feed barley, which um, means it goes basically into an animal feed ration. So this is to feed animals here. We do have other barleys on the, on the estate. These are our spring barley. So winter barley drilled in the autumn, grown through the winter, our spring barley is drilled anywhere from from sort of early spring onwards our spring barleys are of a malting quality so these will go into the um into sort of the brewing malting industries some are used for making lagers and some might go to make whiskies depending on the variety which we've actually grown so that's the the big difference really between the feed barley and the malsters the malters have a premium on them but these big winter crops are mainly for feed. So we get a lot more yield out of these than we do the springs, but the springs may cut for it on hopefully getting the premium. So winter barley, you can tell the barley because of the, the, um, the awns on it here and equally the seeds on the top, the seeds don't have any awn around them. The seeds are quite naked on the, on the top here. So that is our, our winter barley. The biggest crop, the most arid crop, what we will have to harvest on the farm is our winter wheat. This takes up almost 50% of our actual area. It's our biggest crop um, on the farm. So this is the winter wheat behind me. Our winter wheat is predominantly all feed wheat. So here you can see it. 
the wheat itself. These are what we know as the ears. These contain the grain which we are after. So like I say, this is predominantly feed wheat for us on the farm. So most of this wheat will end up in a feed ration for potentially chickens and such like. So you've seen, we'll start with the rape probably then into the winter barley. That will then follow with some of the winter wheats. We'll probably have to break off them winter wheats then because then we'll have what we've got here is our, our spring oats. So here you can see the spring oats still looking very green at the moment, but they will change rapidly. These will come to harvest mid-August onwards. So they've still got another six, seven weeks to go. Um, this is the oat growing within here. You just see it sat inside there. These are all being grown for human consumption oats. So these will go off to a mill and either potentially like your porridge oats you eat in the morning or they can get ground into flour and used as bases in all sorts of things. Getting very, very popular now, the demand for oat is, is growing all the time. Very important break crop for us as well. Good at cleaning weeds up out of the system without having to use um, as much chemistry. So very good crop. But then once the oats are harvested, we will then be on to our next crop. So at a similar time as the oats, we will also have our marifat peas coming ready to harvest. These are our marifats. You can see the pea here with the pods. Got the last few flowers just on the top and the pods have been set and the young peas forming inside. I'll just split a pod and show you. So I took one of the first pods which would have been set, so lower down on the pod and there you can see the peas within the pod. Now the marifat peas are a, a harvested dry pea, so these will, will keep maturing yet, getting a bit bigger. Then the crop will die off, it will dry out, and these will be a dried hard pea. You'll see these, these can be either canned as a marifat pea, these are most likely going to end up like a dry pea for making mushy peas out of. So the next few crops we're about to see are all going to come ripe around a similar time to each other and that's going to be very end of August into early September. So the one I'm studying now is our canary seed. So this is the canary seed. If we have a look here see the little ears on it little white bits you can see just on the edge are the flower bodies of the crop so they've been flowering which will allow it to set seed um, canary seed is is basically bird seed that you can buy from the shops so that's what we're growing here and that is what its use is going to be is, is for bird seed very small head on the top the plant is pretty much like a wheat looking plant, a bit of a cross between a grass and a wheat. So that is our canary seed. You can just see it there blowing in the wind. So let's go and take a look at the next one. So that was the canary seed, which is a quite a specialist crop. But now we move into two, which really are sort of niche trial having a look at. First one we're in is our chickpeas, which you would have seen us back in, I think it was the April edition, actually drilling and putting in the ground. So here is what they look like currently. Here's our chickpea field. You can see they are, are flowering away. So here is the chickpea plant and it's just starting to set its pods. There with my finger is one. Pretty hard to spot but then we've got the flowers here flowering away and this this crop is an indeterminate crop so it'll carry on flowering if it gets the right amount of sunshine levels it'll carry on flowering there we go there's some more pods just hanging on these ones here and setting pods 
So the trick with this crop when it comes to harvest is actually getting it to harvest at the right point. Because it will keep growing and flowering if it's get moisture and sunlight, we will have to desiccate this. By that means um, stopping it growing, we use chemical Roundup is used. It's the only thing you can use to stop it growing. So if we didn't have Roundup, we wouldn't be able to grow this crop. So we will use that. Timing's crucial though, go too soon. You can hamper yield because it hasn't set enough pods. Go too late. Then you've got a lot of immature pods on there and you get a lot of seed contamination. So, so something we're looking at, still trying to learn. Agri's helping with that as well. They're doing all the trials to find out the correct timing. So that's the chickpeas. Let's go and have a look at one of these other, other minor niche crops we're looking at. So this is our other sort of experimental niche crop. These are the harica beans otherwise known as a navy bean as well. There's been trials, we've had them on the farm now for the last few years. We didn't have them last year, but two, three years before that, just had them in small plots, tried to look how we can grow. You may have seen being used elsewhere in Lincolnshire for the first canned bake beans. So that's what we're looking at here, um, just to see how they suit our system. So a very rapid crop. These were drilled middle of May. These will come to harvest around sort of end of August time is the prediction. You can just see on here now the flowering buds coming. Very bushy plant. The problem we're going to have with these, and this is why they don't necessarily suit our conditions, is very long pods. There's not a lot of height. You can see here we're going to get some flowering buds very close to the ground, an inch and a half, two inches off the ground. So the pods will be on the floor. The challenge with them is, is how you get all them pods into the combine to get the beans out without leaving too much of the pod behind and therefore a bean. So just like the peas and the beans you're about to see, the pod and it's the bean within the pod what we're after here. So yeah, these are the Harrick beans, look very nice here at the moment. But these will be, yeah, later on in August when these come to harvest. So let's go and take a look at our final crop. Probably the last crop we will be harvesting is our bean crop. So we have two types of beans. We have our winter beans and our spring beans. Both are the same, but one is drilled winter, survives the winter, whereas one is drilled into the spring, grows a lot quicker in the spring. Both can go for human consumption. So... A lot of them, for example, might go over to a place like Egypt. Our spring beans, though, are grown for seed. By that, they are grown to then be multiplied up and other farmers will drill them next year to grow other crops of beans. Our winter beans is what I am stood in now. And you can see these are actually taller than what I am here. That's because these have had a much longer growing period than our springs are. Our winters will hopefully go for human. If they don't, if we get um, too much staining on them, too much pest um, damage on them from a pest called the Brookid beetle, its larvae burrow in um, and eat the centers out. These will then go into animal feed rations. Um, we want to meet human consumption grade because that carries a premium for us. So let's take a look at the bean. You can see pretty much like the peas you saw they're growing in the pod here. If we open up the actual bean, so it looks similar to like what the peas looked, but here is the bean. Still a, a little way to go yet on them. You can see all the green foliage. All these leaves will die off and these will actually turn black. The stems will go black and the beans will go black. And these have got to dry down to below 15% moisture. You can just see them all sat in there, all the pods. It's been a very good year for the beans with all the moisture we've actually had in the spring and then the um, light, what we've had. So a quick whistle tour through the different types of crops and why we're growing them here at Reesby Estates. Next month, our July edition, you should see what new combine we've gone for and also see it in action. So... We look forward to seeing you next month.